Hello, Chris, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. One second. Yeah, Chris, can you yeah. open the file? Fearless skill 2, which I had shared, you have yeah. that with you. Uh, before that, I know I was practicing yesterday and I, I didn't get a video, video, videos for anything, right? So the last pill, uh, pill sequel, uh, the Understood. last part. He's on I, I don't know who are the others of coordinating. The person who is Okay. Uh, I can't. I can't hear you. I can't. It's just breaking off. Okay. Okay. So I just want to like uh, go through the uh, last bit of the last last lesson. Like I still, I didn't get it. Sorry. I tried to like do it uh, myself. I just like we just like uh, two minutes on that. I guess. Yeah. What did we do? We were doing loops, right? We were doing loops. Mm. This condition. Yeah, we end loop. Yeah, 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 loop. Yeah, but the last one, but we're doing the sub uh, sub query in the uh, 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 in the query. We're doing a sub declaration in a declaration. Hello. Hello. Hello? 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 Hello?
Hello? Yeah, Chris, tell me which part of the lesson you wanted me to repeat? Uh, the subquery, last one, the last one of the first part. The sub Yeah, the, no, sub declarations. Hello? 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 On that output, the other query is executed. Okay, you, you cut off those. So, so the the last the, the sub declarations. No, in the PLS SQL or in SQL? PL SQL, yeah. Oh, PL SQL, the nested blocks. Okay. Yeah, the nested blocks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 fine. Yeah, I will do it for you. I will do it for you because I will type a new example for you instead of something which is already there. So here is a block. Declare. I I can see hmm? you. I can see you. Okay, okay. Can you now? No. Okay, now I can, yes. Yeah. Now let's start. In the declaration section of this block, there is a variable x, which is of yeah. number type. Okay. And you have assigned a value to it as 10. Okay, yeah. begin. Once I begin an end, there is another declare. Begin. End. Okay. Now inside the declare of the sub block, here is a variable y, which is the number that whole and equal to 20. Yeah. Now what does the rule say? Any any variable which is declared in the outer block is known in the inner block. So DBMS output output underscore line. I will display x. I will give some space and I will display the value of y. What is x? x is the outer block variable. What is y? y is the inner block variable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Both 10 and 20 are displayed. Both 10 yeah. and 20 are displayed. Okay. Now, yeah. now, the challenge is if the inner block also has this again, then how are you going to differentiate the outer x and the inner x. Yes, because display of x here in the sub block will give priority to the local variable. So 15 and 20 will be displayed, 10 and 20 will not be displayed. No, you're cutting, you sorry. Uh, no, no, I, I don't understand again, sorry. Hello? Okay, you understood, you understood about the display of 10 and 20? Yeah, the, the x number is 10 and the y number is 20 and that's how I understood. I, yeah, and you're trying to display both x and y. Yeah. You're displaying x and y. Where is x declared? x is not in this block. Yes. x is not in the inner block. x is actually in the outer block. Yes. So whatever is there in the outer block, whatever is there in the outer block is actually accessible in the sub block? Yes. Okay. But whatever is there in the sub block is not accessible outside. Okay, so if I say I could give us output line y Yeah, in the outside it will give me an error. There is no such variable y. You cannot display y. There is we will get Hello. Hello? 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 
Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello? Hello?
Hello? Hello? Hello? Yeah, Krish. Krish, sorry. I, I am cutting off, so I had to log out and log in again. You can okay. hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, very sorry, Krish. Very sorry. No, this is no, really it's, disturbing. No, it's okay. Uh, it's, it's a technical problem. They can't do anything. We try, we, we try to figure out these things, but sometimes they never... Yeah. Okay. okay, so yeah, so yeah, go ahead. So we were here, we were here. Yeah. Uh, so outside uh, this block, like outside, in the outer block, I try to display why you will get an error. Yeah, I, I can see your screen. Yes, yes. Yeah, I can, I'll, I'll get an error for sure. Yes. Because you're trying to link the inner block with the outer block. No, out of the block yes, with the inner block. So that's the reason that you are. You're you trying to access. You're trying to access a variable which is yeah. declared in the inner outside. That's yeah. not possible. But if you do the other way, something which is declared outside is accessible inside. Inside, okay. Yes, it's accessible inside. Okay. So now, now the the problem is when there is a variable mm -hmm. declared in both the blocks with the same name and same data type. Okay. Then how to differentiate it? How to differentiate it? This can happen only when we label a block, give a name for the block, and access the variable of that block by the label. Yes. So that is what we were doing in the previous example, where I had given a label for the block as XYZ, XYZ. The, uh, the variable which has to be accessed in both the blocks where was father underscore uh, like date underscore date of birth okay which is present in both so if you wanted to know father's date of birth it is xyz dot date of birth if you wanted to know child's date of birth it's only date of birth there in the sub block yeah so now you got that example I need to share my screen the organizer should make me the presenter only then I can share my screen I know maybe he's off I guess he went to for it yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe the session started, no? so he thought it's going on fine. Uh, and today is a Sunday, that's a challenge. Oh, yeah, they, they won't be there, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they yeah. won't be there. Usually the sessions don't happen on Saturday, Sunday, yeah. because uh, I was not available and uh, these days it turned out to be quite hectic. But when yeah. I started your course, somewhere in June when I started, I had a different uh, end date. I I assumed yes, we can complete by this. But what happens is usually a couple of days you would take off. Some unexpectedly I would take off, and that's the reason that it will not go as per the schedule. Yeah. Actually, this course is around 25 sessions, 24 yeah. to 25 sessions. Okay, uh, but uh, that does not happen in 25 days. Actually, it takes sometimes one and a half month or sometimes two months yeah. if it's yeah. not irregular. If it's not regular. Yeah. So yes. my screen has to be shared. Until then, I cannot take you further. So is that example clear, Krish? Is that example clear? Yeah, yeah. Just how about can you call him? Just message him, maybe, and then say. No, I don't have. I don't have anybody's contact with me. <laughs> uh, the I, uh, This is how it happens. I have no mail IDs of yours. I don't have any no, of their contacts. No, not, 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 not mine. Not mine. But the the, the presenters. But no, the presenter whom I have is on leave. So somebody else is doing this coordination. So yeah, 
That sucks. So if you can open PLS scale 2, it will be great. PLS okay. scale 2. Yeah. Maybe send a message in the uh, in the uh, this one at least, so I can. Yeah, just, that's uh, what I'm doing. Yes, I, I, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, because I I don't know which number to call. The number usually I call the person is on leave. He'll be back tomorrow, but tomorrow we are not working. Okay, uh, you open the file. PLS skill two. I'll take you through the example. I'll take you through the example. Okay. Now the previous example is like, and I tried to execute it. It's only like PLC project uh, completed. That's all. No, set server output should be on. Right. Again, set okay. server output yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, very first thing. Okay, so now I can paste it maybe. Okay, data path. Okay, so. Name. You get both. The father yeah. name not a problem. Child name not the problem. Date of birth in the sub block is child's date of birth. So if you want to get father's date of birth, how should I do that then? If I want to get father's date of birth, that's why you label the block. That is why you label the block. Okay. How would you, how would you, okay, where's X, Y, Z in the output though? Is, they should, they should, okay. No, no, that will not be there. That's just the name for the block, right? That's just the label of the block. No, no, you put X, Y, Z there. You, you did put X, Y, Z in the output no. block. That is how you access the variable, X, Y, Z dot the variable name. Okay. X, Y, Z is the name. Dot the variable. Okay, and then out the date of birth. Okay. You can label the block as inner outer. So you can say outer dot date of birth. Inner block is named as inner. So you can say inner dot date of birth. Where's inner block? We, we, we didn't say inner. We, we haven't seen a block we didn't here, name. right? We didn't yeah. name. We didn't okay. name. But I'm telling you can also name inner and call it as inner dot date of birth. Okay. So what what I seen is from DBS output from the father's name it's like data birth, uh, father's name yeah. concatenation father's name because it it yes. it's outside already anyway so, but the data of, I mean I mean I mean father's name sorry for the date of birth you call X Y Z dot date of birth. Oh, yes, that's the label of the block dot the variable of the block. Okay, so child name is child name okay and then data birth of child name is okay data birth of data birth okay. So you're not calling anything, okay, okay. Okay, uh, I still didn't, I still, I'm sorry, I still did not like get the, I know we're wasting time on this, but I still, not get, I still did not get what, the, what exactly it is telling. Okay, okay, I, I, I'll just tell you, where do you stay, Chris? Where do you stay? You just give me the place, the locality okay. where you stay. Edmonton, Edmonton, for example, Edmonton. Edmonton. So there is, there is a person by name Krish at Edmonton. Yeah. Again, there's another person by Krish, by the name Krish. Okay. Uh, somewhere in the other place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I, I need to differentiate both of them. Yeah. Uh, just if I say Krish, I will not know who is this. Krish at Edmonton yeah. or Krish in Hyderabad. Who is yes. this? Okay. So we will say Edmonton dot Krish. This is Krish in Edmonton. Yeah. I'll just call you by your label, by your ID, by your identity, okay. by your location. So that is what labeling is going to help us. Okay. Then I have to differentiate two variables with the same name and same data type in mm -hmm. the sub-block. 
Because okay. in the sub block, if I if I go to Admin and say Krish, everybody would know you only. But if I okay. say Krish from Hyderabad, then oh, this is not this Krish. There is another Krish from Hyderabad. Okay. Right? Okay. You understood? So that yeah. is why we need to label the block. So that's why it's XYZ. That's the whole point yes, of this, that's, that's this example. Label. Yes, that's the label XYZ. Okay. See, if I say there if is I no say need to label. Yeah. There is but, no need to label if there were no two Krishes at all. Okay. Only because there were two Krish, and if I go to Admington and say Krish, I will get the local Krish who is there yes. at Admington. Okay, yes. I yes. will not be accessing Krish in Hyderabad. So if okay. I want to check about Krish in Hyderabad, I will go and inquire, people, do you know somebody by name Krish from Hyderabad? Okay, yes. So okay, now, there's very yeah. clear identity. Yes, I understand. That's, the whole point of this one is actually calling the label itself to, to yes. access the output. Yes. So I would say admin.krish. It's like okay. Hyderabad.krish. Yes. That is how you address, you identify, you locate. You think that you can call the outer block, but you can't call the inner block, uh, inner block from outer block. That is not possible at all. Yeah, yeah. That is not possible at all. Okay, I understand now. Thank you. You could you could get it now. Yes, okay. I can. Fine. Uh, okay, did you open TLS skill too? Yes, I did. You did. You see something like the very first example where we have written begin and end. Begin and end. In between begin and end, there's an insert statement and there's an update statement. Okay? We wrote this, these kind of examples we did before also. We write PLS skill blocks with BML statements inside. With insert and update and delete. We can do whatever we want. It, right? Okay, yes. We submit the block. We execute the block. We get a result. What is the result we get? PLS skill procedure successfully completed. Yes. That's the result we get. But yes. actually what we did inside the block, we did an insert, we did an update, we did a delete, we did so many things inside the block. Mm -hmm. But ultimately the result what we get is just one message, PLS skill procedure successfully completed. Yes. Okay. Instead of PLS skill, if we had done this insert, update and delete in SQL, what mm -hmm. will happen? We, we have to do one at a time, so first we would do an insert. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We get a message, one row created. Yeah. Then we do an update. We do an update. With mm -hmm. this update, we get a message, four rows updated. Yes. Then we do a delete. With yeah. delete, we get a message, five rows deleted. So we yeah. will come to know that at the end of every statement, how mm -hmm. many rows in the table got affected. Right, Chris? Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes, but yes. But when the entire logic is put within a PLS scale block and executed, we cannot know the status of individual statements. Mm -hmm. It only tells PLS scale procedure successfully completed. We don't know how many rows were updated. We don't know yeah. how many rows were deleted. We don't know anything. But yeah. and if the business need is, and if there is a business need which tells like more than three rows updated, then do a delete. Yes, do an insert. There is some logic. Just an example. I'm giving mm -hmm. you some example. Yeah. Yeah. to know if there are more than two Krish at he whatever you said, Hamilton, no? Edmonton, uh, yeah, yeah. Edmonton, yeah. Edmonton, yeah. okay, then you have to have another Krish in some other place and not at Edmonton, something like mm -hmm. that, okay, yes. so we have to conditionally uh, decide what to do based on the number of rows affected by DML activity, we need to conditionally take a different routes. Yes. If this is the need, Okay, there is something called as an implicit cursor which we can make use of inside a PLS scale block. Mm -hmm. We write a block, begin and end, we write so many statements. Immediately after every statement, after an insert or an update or a delete, we can make use of this implicit cursor. What will this cursor do? This will help you know how many rows were affected because this is having a property Percentage row count. Can you see somewhere there? SQL percentage yes. row count. That's a numeric yes. value. SQL is the name, fixed. That's the name for all the implicit cursors. Mm -hmm. These cursors are created, used, and described by Oracle. So what what, what, what something do you mean implicit? Automatically, internally. Oracle uh, does this. Oracle creates it. Oracle so keeps track of it. SQL is the SQL is the keyword here. SQL percentage yes. row count is the keyword. Yes, SQL is a keyword. That's the name given for the implicit cursor. Oracle will identify it like this. 
percentage row count is one of its property or attribute. Okay. Percentage row count, which which will tell how many rows were affected by the DML operation. Yes. Okay. So mm. the same example which we done uh, when we did PLSK first day of PLSK. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If we want to know, if we want to know how many rows are getting affected in our PLS scale block, okay, we can make use of this implicit cursor. Okay. Insert into course table, we are inserting a row, and I want to display a message, one row created, record, one record inserted, something like that, because okay. it is immediately after the statement, which will tell you how many rows got affected. You do a delete operation. Maybe four rows are deleted, or 10 rows are deleted, or 30 rows are deleted. We don't mm -hmm. know how many rows got deleted. Yeah. So if we have to know how many rows got deleted, we can say yes, SQL percentage row count. Okay, we can put this in criteria. Yes, SQL percentage row count is more than five. Then do like this. We can yeah. put the number of rows yeah. got deleted in a criteria and accordingly do some. Yeah. Can I ask you one question? Further? Like, can I ask one yes. question before that? In the DBMS output line, do we need to put it? Yes. Even if you don't put it, can I just end it before without without the output line? I don't want to, I don't want to see any output line. I just want to say end it, like update and then end it, end the thing. I don't want to see any. But then, line. then you will not know how many rows are affected, right? No, no, this no, example no. Is I, only I, I know, I, I, understand, I understand. But my question is, can I do it? Can can people yes, do it? Yes, you can. Without, okay. Yes, you can. You 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 need not have DBMS output. You can okay. end your block. You can have PLS scale blocks without DBMS output. We'll see okay. that very soon. Okay. Because DBMS output is something for somebody who is executing the block at the back end, who is yeah. executing the block at the scale prompt. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in real time, we will not be executing blocks at the scale prompt. Right? We will okay. call it from Java application. So mm -hmm. for whom the DBMS output is going to be useful? For the developers, when they are coding the block, Yes. To know how things are going on, to know yes. the flow, yes. to know the execution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can yes. you paste this? Can you copy paste this example? And my screen is not yet shared. Can you paste this example, please? Which one? The yeah. Uh, uh, begin. The begin. Insert into course nine. Oh yeah. Okay, yes, 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 I have. The first one. Okay, and then, and then yes, yeah, 19 records in, inserted, six, rot, six records updated. So one record, so one record, one record inserted, okay, six rows, six, oh wow, okay, why is it six rows update, update, employees say, okay, employees. Yeah, in department six, 30, there are okay. six rows. Mm -hmm. In department 30, there are six rows. See, now you got a message, how many rows got updated? Yes. Earlier when we had, without DBMS output, a skill percentage row count, we only could have got PLS skill procedure successfully completed. You yes. would not have known uh, how many rows got affected. And if the need is to know how many rows got affected and accordingly do some manipulation. Okay. So we have to go for this method only. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What is this? So, so in, 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 in the in the in the so they, it 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 will display like that. Like the output would be the last you know one record inserted to six 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 records updated. Yes. That's in the, yes. in the output line, okay. Yes, in the output line. Uh, this also we will not see in real time. We don't want to display of how many rows got affected. If you have to take a decision based on this, if mm -hmm. more than five rows inserted, then do delete. Yes, yeah. do update. Okay. Yeah. So you can do your processing based on this these numbers in the same PLS skill block. In this example, I'm just, I'm just showing you how to know how many rows got affected. What yeah. are you going to do after knowing how many rows got affected? You're going to take accordingly. You're take. You're going to take your branching accordingly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, Chris. That's about something called an implicit cursor, which is created, used, and destroyed by Oracle. Okay. Uh, created, used, and destroyed by Oracle. Oracle. They have some attributes. Yes. Yeah. The only percentage row count. I I spoke about only percentage row count. Yeah. Just above that example, I have typed something. A skill percentage found. A skill percentage not found. A skill percentage is open. What are they? They are the attributes. They are the uh, they are the implicit cursor attributes, which will be true or false. They will be true or false. They will return okay. true or false. 
when will they return true? When will they return true? If the update statement what you're doing has affected any one, at least one row of the table, percentage found will be true? Yes. If it has not affected any single row, there is no data at all which got affected, percentage not found will be true? Okay, okay, yes. So they'll be true or false. They can also be used to know whether some, anything has happened or no. You just wrote a delete statement. You don't know whether something is deleted or no. Mm -hmm. With row count, you can get to know the number, how many rows got deleted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You need not know the number, you just need to know whether the delete has happened or no. Okay, how do I do that then? Like, uh, 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 you can simply say, if, if SQL percentage found, then delete occurred, else delete did not occur, something like that. Yes. I'm just giving you the usage of okay. these attributes. They'll be just returning you true or false, boolean true or false. Found okay, will be true when there's something found. Not found will be true when there's nothing found. Okay, so how do you how do I set an example though? Like uh, if we are found found is open, and okay, we can we have we just have a row count, and then yes, we we are only displaying the numbers. How many rows has been affected? Yes. Assume that the numbers affect the okay. In the same example, if you say update EMP set sal equal to sal plus hundred by department number equal to ninety, mm -hmm. ninety. Yeah. Okay, what will happen? There is no, there is no department with number 90. 90, okay, yes. So zero rows are updated, zero rows are updated? Yes. Zero rows updated? In this yes. case, your skill percentage not found will be true and found will be false? Yes. That is it. So how, how well, I just want to see, uh, okay, let's say if I, if I put 90 and then copy and paste, right? So. Yeah, so just what? in the place of 30, put 90. Yeah, so yeah, I'll tell you. In the place of 30, put 90, yeah. copy paste. Okay, then but then, wait, yeah. change in 9 to 10. Change in 9, course ID 9 to 10 because okay, of the course ID is trying to Okay, for example, I'll put 999 or something. Okay, I'll just... Yes. Okay. You cannot make it too long also. It's only number of two digits. So we have to give just the two digit number. Okay, and I'll just put 99. Okay. Uh, I will put up in paste and then I say slash enter slash okay, one, one record up oh, no I say one record updated uh, there should be course value 99 then the records up, updated one no one record yeah. inserted one record inserted zero records updated got it yes. because there is no department number 90 zero records are updated so now there is no data affecting this there no, is no, no data. No, now, no. Okay, okay, no data affected, okay. So now, we, now what will be true? SQL percentage not found will be true? But, 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 I, but, but, my, but my row count is still, I, I, I didn't put the SQL percentage found in the, in the, in the we'll query. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. Okay. Row count is zero. Just the line, just after the update statement, just after the update statement, you type, it. I S S. Yes. Okay. SQL percentage row count. Where, where should where should I put that one after the row uh, count? After the update statement. After the update statement. Okay. SQL percentage not found. Okay. Just copy paste. I'll share these two lines. Found then. If SQL percentage not found then. Okay, you will say, okay, uh, dbms underscore output, I've, I'll send you in the chat, dot okay. put underscore line, okay, no data affected, affected, send this, uh, yeah. and after these three lines, you can have dbms output, SQL percentage, row count, Then I know, say CPF output line, no data affected. What? Okay, if not found then, it is. Control C. Okay, so I'll 
know what? I will. Begin copy. Okay. Not affected. And if wow, oh, and if. So what's the end if here? Hello? 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 Yeah, Chris, I sent one example on the chat window. Did you copy yes. this, sir? Yes, I'm trying to copy identify. Okay. Output is scale row count into records inserted. Okay. Update employees department. This department 30, right? So we'll say department No, no, 90. sorry. It should be 90. It should be yeah. 90. Okay. Sorry. So how I I I I copied and pasted that right. So how can I I I I didn't press the enter yet. So how do I I don't want I don't want this to be executed. So what Why, should I? What do? happened? No, no, I'm just Why because, it's, because it's uh, thirty. Right. So I want to put ninety there. So I, I don't okay, want just, this command. Okay. Uh, you are not giving a slash, right? You are not giving a slash, no, right? No, no. You just you press enter, 
you give a dot dot and dot okay dot, i'll give you the okay, okay gotcha i'll give you the correct no i understand yeah dot, dot yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. i'll give you another one i'll give you another one Yeah, I gave you another one. The intent uh, team members are put as a okay, row count. It should count the row. Update employee. That's all in department number 90. If SQL not found, SQL person not found, then team members will not be updated. And what's so what's end if? That's the keyword to end the if. No, we have started an if, right? If. Okay, end if. Okay. Fair enough. Sorry, and then yeah. Okay, yeah, one record inserted, no data affected, zero records updated. Yes. That is what we were expecting, no? That is yes. what no, day, no percentage not found will do. Percentage not found will be true when there are no rows affected. So in this oh. example, there are no rows affected, so not found was true. Because it was true, we displayed the message, no data affected. Okay, yeah. Unless, yeah, okay, I got it, okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I understand now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you scroll down? I'll I'll take you to the next example. Oh yeah, you put on one more example. Yes, yes, I did. Yes. Oh, you put like so many examples here. Yes. There are no 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 no. That the PLS skill to notepad file. I'm asking you to scroll down. Okay. Okay. Yes. I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so how do we take a value? How do we take a value from a table into a variable? Right, yes. in PLS, okay? we take a value into a variable. So we have so many challenges when we take a value into a variable. The variable yes. should be declared correctly. Its size should match. The data type should match. So what do we do? We go to declare variable to be percentage type, employee table dot salary percentage type. We declare variable to be percentage type. Yes. Then what we did, we declared a variable to hold one full row of the table, percentage row type. Yes. With percentage row type what happened, we could have one variable, we could have a variable which could hold one full row of the table. Yes. Suppose you write a joint query, you write a joint query. What is a joint query? Reading columns from multiple tables. Yes. So, here you have data from multiple tables. Yes. You may have a row from EMP table. You may have a row from DPT table. So, how are we going to take these two rows into a single variable in PLS? Are you understanding? Yeah. Okay. You need, you, okay. You need multiple members of different, different data types. Yes. If you, if, if you speak about address. Address is just not text. Address has door number, street number, street name, city name, region code, country, zip code and things like that. Address has so many components in it. Yes. In PLSQL, if you want to have variables to hold multiple values of different different data types, one variable is going to be having values like address. If I say address, address has door number, street number, street name, logically related items. Mm -hmm. If I say phone number, if I say phone number, it has the code, it has the code and the pin code, it has the code and the number. Yes. It has two things in it. So like yes. this, you may have you may have to hold multiple values of heterogeneous type into a single variable in PLSQL. Okay. Okay. If you need to put that, you are going to create your own data type. This is called as a composite type or user defined data type. You are a user. You are creating your own data type with whatever combination of values you want to. Yes. You are defining the structure of this data type. And then what are we doing? We are creating variables of this type and we are assigning values to this and using them. Instead of okay. just having number, instead of just having character, we are putting all together and creating one data type. Okay, I'm, I'm lost, sorry. Uh, okay, now let's take address only. Wait, wait, let's take address. Okay. How is address? Address has row number. What is row number? It's numeric. Address yeah. has street name. 
street name is character text yeah. Yeah. address as the zip code which is numeric so instead of having instead of having three separate variables you can have a single variable as address which has these three components in it yeah so that is called as a user defined data type so what you will do you will create your own data type as address and this data type address will have three members in it it will have a numeric value it will have a character value and it will have another numeric value mm -hmm. yeah so that is called as a user defined data type or a composite data type okay yeah user is creating his own data type so in plsql we are we can create our own data types and that is called as a type which is created as a record that is what i am showing in the next example composite data types are nothing but user defined data type okay, okay. what is data type number is a data type right yeah yeah and, and uh, where char char where char are all data types right yes yeah. they are all data types given by oracle yes yeah. so now using these you are going to create your own data type as address yeah because address will have a numeric value it will have two character values and it will have one numeric value again yeah. so address is a combination of multiple values correct yeah. yeah so instead of having four separate variables you will have a single variable of address data type yeah so in turn address is having four members in it yes so that is what i am trying to do here i am creating a record type type name is record did you find that example yes declare type my record is record ah wait wait my rec is a record like address my rec is the record what you declaring what is this record having this record is having a member a it is having a member b it is having a member c this record is having three members in it a b and c okay so first thing is which one is the keyword here like type my record which one is uh, type is a keyword is record is also keyword my rec is your your own name you can give any name you want okay, type okay my is record okay type and then type name is record. okay what okay. is the structure of the record everything is your own a b c are the members of the record what is the data type of a a is employee number what is b b is employee name what is c c is department name c <coughs> employee dot employee number person type okay so we're defining b. here a okay a employee dot employee number type okay so yeah. now like address my rec is a user defined type what is the structure of my rec my rec has a b c three yeah. members in it okay mm -hmm. clear clear chris so like yeah. like address like uh, what to say uh, like some other details my rec is a user defined type which has three members in it a b and c are the members a b and c are the members okay now what are i do, what are we doing we underscore my rec we are creating a variable of what data type my rec data type yes we are we can create how many other variables we want but here i am just creating one variable we underscore my rec this is a variable yeah. what is the data type of variable my rec see all these days we could declare variables only of number type character type date type but now i am declaring a variable we underscore my rec Whose data type is my rec type? Uh -huh. Now, v underscore my rec is a variable inside PLSQL block which can hold the value of a, b, and c, all three. Yes. Yeah. But this is the only advantage. You are having a single variable which can hold multiple values of different different data types. Okay. So what happened now? V underscore my rec has a b c three items in it so we are assigning values to this observe here select e dot employee number comma e dot employee name comma d dot department name so what is this this is a join query into i am writing into three variables v underscore my rec dot a comma v underscore my rec dot b comma v underscore my rec dot c 
from EMC E, I am getting employee number, employee name, department name. So it's a joint query which needs data from two tables. We are pulling out columns from two tables and putting it into record members. Okay. And displaying the same. Just observe what's happening. You just go through the example. If without record we had to do, Krish, if we had to do without record, we had to declare four variables or three variables uh -huh. because one to hold employee number, one to hold employee name, one to hold department name. So we had to declare three variables. But now in a single variable, we are doing all this. Yeah. Why? Because we have already created the, uh, we have already put all the members and created one variable. Yeah. We, have, we have already put how many ever we want elements into it and created one record. What is the record? Collection of related data items is a record. Yeah. Okay. Collection of related data items is a record. So in a table, whatever rows we have, they are called as records only, right? Yeah. Yes. Can you run this example? Can you copy? first go through Chris? First understand, then copy this. Because if you only copy paste, it will definitely work. These, yeah. these are all executed examples only. But try yeah. to understand what are we doing in this line. We are creating a record. What, are we, what is the structure of the record? It has three members, A, B, C. Then what are we doing? We are creating a variable of that record type. Once we create a variable of the record type, we start our PLS scale block. Okay, we assign values to the record members and we try to display them. Yes, uh, I don't understand the, uh, from the beginning it's like select E dot employee number. That's a query, no? That is how we write a joint query, no? When we have to read columns from multiple pages. Okay. E dot employee number, E dot name, E dot, D dot department name, from yeah. EMP, E, joint, D, C, T, E. Okay, into my rec, into V, underscore my rec, yeah. dot a yes come out dot b from employee employee so join is a keyword there okay join department d and yeah you have to uh Chris, please uh, don't take me wrong you i uh, there is you have to do a lot of reading practice uh, and yeah. now, moreover you have not got the videos i can see that if you have got all the videos up to date with you, you would have gone through them and you would know yeah. uh, what happened before, what happened in my previous session. Yeah. Okay. I'll 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 just uh, I'll just uh, put them a word. In fact, I already told them yesterday. I wrote a mail. Yeah. I'll just to tell them again because it's difficult for you and also to for me. Yeah. To, to, to exactly. The reason is you know the, the biggest thing is eight and nine classes. The we, I didn't get the uh, joint queries. Uh, videos and then it's like really confusing. Once I no, once Krish. Uh, okay, okay, no problem, Chris. One good thing is after today's session, we are yeah. meeting only after 15 days because yeah. the coming weekend you are not in town. After that, yeah. I, I I am there in town. 11th, 12th, and 13th we can have yeah. session. I am there in yeah. town. Okay, so by then you would have got all the videos. You please yeah. go through them. You please go through them and practice the, not only the videos. You yeah. go to the PPT. You get a lot of stuff on the net. You Google. Yeah. You read. Because yeah. it is very difficult. It is uh, uh, really difficult for you to follow and for yeah. me also to say. Yeah, it's for you to difficult to say anymore. It's just because like, if I don't understand anything, because I was, yes, I, was yes. uh, I was repeatedly asking him to send the videos for last 10 days. Every, every, we send the email every day. And he's like, okay, okay. Uh, I didn't even get any reply from him. No, no, no. The, the problem now is that person is on leave. No, I yeah. will speak to him tomorrow. Tomorrow he's back to office. I will drop him a mail, him a separate mail, and I will call him and I will speak to him. There, there's no point. See, sometimes yeah. it happens, even the participants won't understand, no? Uh, they won't tell me. I will just, I, what will, because I'm not connected, no, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, face yeah. to face with you all to know what, yeah. how things are going on. <laughs> no. So usually yeah. I, usually I just ensure that everything is clear. Yes, there's no point in uh, facilitating a session like this. Yeah. Because because I, 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 I'll explain what exactly I know and then if I, I'll, I'll tell directly if I don't know it, if I, if I can understand yes, it. Yes, yes. No, that is how you should learn because you're learning, Chris. Yeah. 
the you are yeah, learning the problem is, i don't know how long how long would you be available right that's the thing so that no, no no i have no problem yeah i have no problem but once i'm committed i will finish my batch i will not take up anything else in this time uh, until i finish yours okay uh, because that my the week days became quite hectic that's why i opted for weekends with you for you okay it's okay we can go for four weekends we can go for three weekends no problem at all so how many how much how much is left anymore uh around the six more hours of course is left yes oh so that's it seven hours of course is left yes seven hours course is left seven hours yes okay hmm. this this gets complicated from now on right yes definitely yes. so lot of practice lot of reading understanding uh, is required maybe yes you will you if you follow with the video definitely you will understand yeah because they will under explain each and every example right yeah No, that's how that's how I did until eight classes, and then and then after that some class, and then after eight nine I, I didn't get it, and then ten, well, and then the uh, the up, updates and the, on all the inserts and everything. That I am fine with that. I I I, I took. You are fine with that. Yeah, okay, fine important with that. lessons you have not received. No, yeah. I will tell them. I will tell them. It's just and that is the reason students are uh, facing difficulty, and even I am yeah. facing difficulty. I'll just put this across. <laughs> and then because be, it's all remotely the, controlled. No, there is no yeah, ownership. Yeah. That's it. Ah, uh, okay. So, and the only biggest biggest uh, concern for me is the joint queries. So I I cannot I can I I can I didn't get that, and then I was I was going back in, and then and then it's it's for for me who's not really into SQL, is it's so confusing. Like it's just yes. When yes. you say dot, when, as soon as soon as I see the e dot e dot e names and e dot d dot d names, it's just like. I don't know which one to put D. I don't know which one to like. Which one? Uh, sometimes I get I get confused to put D name first dot D, and then it's just uh, I was I was asking him like you know like, I, I we sent him so many emails actually. I, I know he okay. it's not no, for last no. two it's not, not for last two days for the okay. last one week I'm sending actually. Sending. Okay, I don't know. I don't know all this yeah. is going on. I just I'll put a strong uh, give a strong input on this uh, because uh, the schedule is getting this uh, things are not in place. No. Okay. And then, uh, what, yeah. There's no point in go, going ahead if you're not clear with something or not through with something. <laughs> no. Right. I no. got two, three, ah. six, seven, nine. Yeah. Nine, so nine, what nine. are we doing here? Just yeah. just assume that something like this is possible in PLS scale, where we create our own type which can hold any number of any values. Yeah. Based on our needs, we are only creating it. Okay. Uh, we are making a heterogeneous combination of different elements. and they are creating a one single variable of that type and they are using it this is that one single variable v underscore my rec is that single variable which can hold whatever we want it yes okay mm -hmm. you understood this yeah i understood that part yes and okay no fine krish i'll stop here for today no problem uh, i will uh, do it in the next session meanwhile i want you, you to do lot of things like uh, going through all the videos uh, even plr skill once you finish joins and subquery you just continue with all the other videos you you have to come till this video you have to finish till this video only then i will be uh, in a position to continue next because okay. everything is related everything is related begin and declare and it is suddenly what is in this is it's, it's all connected no maybe going for other examples i will use this again i will have a record once again so you should be very clear why i am using it Yes. No. No. I know. I, I understand. I know. I understand. I understood every every P L SQL structure. Yeah. P L S K. You understand. Till now, you understood P L S K. P L S K structure. Yeah. Totally okay, understood. Okay. How to write it? Only because how to write it. Join. Join query. Join query is the biggest concern. But that's very important. That's yeah. very very important. I know. It's you important. You don't know P L S K. You yeah. know joins and sub queries. You can start working in industry. Yeah. So can okay. I ask you like next time maybe can we can we start with some uh, in, in the joints and out out the joints to like one? Okay, no problem. Yes, I want? don't mind repeating. Yes, no problem. We'll have a repeat session on that. Okay, you know what we? I'll, I'll let's say, we you know the thing is now uh, we we were uh, we can uh, we can uh, I'll ask my my uh, um, manager to pay you like you know pay again more I guess but like I, I I'll make sure that. It, You know, I'm thinking it's it's a waste of your time, right? Because I don't if I don't understand, and then I'm I'm asking you repeating one yes, more, yes. one more, one or two uh, more hours. Yes. That's waste. You, yes. you know, you're yes. spending some time, right? So you had to get compensated yes. for that for sure. Definitely understood, Chris. Uh, yes. Each student is different. Sometimes it happens students can quickly catch up with what I am speaking. Yes. Session will close in 23 hours. 
24 hours, 25 hours, everything fine. But sometimes, uh, like we are not regular and there is some disconnect, video is not shared or could not understand, it happens. Okay, we will take that apart. As of now, I want you to also put some effort, go through everything, whatever is being shared with you and I will, I will also enforce, okay, that is seeing all the videos reach you on time and you go through that. Okay. So, so, so when is the next time we should come? Next, we are connecting. Next session. Uh, that's what, as you said, you said you are not in town on, wait, and you are not next in town on August, yeah, yeah. August, uh, 5th and 6th. August 5th and 6th you are not in town. No. We can connect 12th and 13th? Yes, 12th and 13th is fine. Yes. And so, you, so you don't have any. If you don't have any, why at least one hour and before and like in between, right? One or two hours, I think. Yes, I can. When is that? You know, eleventh. Eleventh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Eleventh. Eleventh. Eleventh will work one hour. Twelfth and thirteenth will work for two hours each day or one okay. and a half hour each. Day. So in the okay. between, the, yes. you, you don't have nothing actually. I can't even like get like one hour from you between before 11th, right? So it's just too, you're too tight uh, than the weekend. Yes, too oh. tight, yes. No, I reach home very late. I've oh, taken okay. up an assignment, a 30-day assignment outside, and in Bangalore, it's very, very challenging to be on time. Actually, my my plan was like to finish everything by 31st of July, your assignment, and then that would start. But actually, it didn't happen. Uh, because I had to take break a couple of days, and you were not around, okay, some holidays in between. We are left with only seven hours of session. No, but one, we'll of the big, one, one of the biggest concern is the, the technical difficulty we have. We lost at least like more than four or five yes. days on, yes, on the yes, yes. With technical difficulties. Yes. And just, yes, yes. I'm yes. so sorry about that. I'm so it. sorry about the uh, for, No for problem, Krish. As long as <laughs> any of my participants is learning something, I have no problem. Okay. okay. Next, okay. Next, time, okay. next time on the 11th, would you please, would you, would you mind please like going through the sub, uh, jo in, in, in the journey? Yeah, I will. Do. I will. Do. Would you mind please? Thank you. So, so would you send an email maybe on the uh, before uh, uh, to, to to your hello, 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 hello. Hello? 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 Hello?
Hello.